Hey there, it's Aviva from Elementor. Welcome back to How to Build a Blog in Elementor. In the last lesson, we got acquainted with the Elementor editor and learned how to customize our site using global styles. In this lesson, we'll get familiar with the Elementor theme builder, a single place to manage all your site parts in a visual and intuitive way. Access the theme builder from any page edited with Elementor by clicking the menu icon and choosing Theme Builder. The theme builder displays all the parts of our site and allows us to edit the header, footer, post templates, page templates, and more. The green dot next to a template's name indicates that this template is active and accessible to visitors. With a preview for each site part, it gives us a bird's eye view of our entire site. Since we've used a kit for our website, all these templates have already been imported together with it. Cool. The panel on the left gives us a quick overview of the various types of site parts. Clicking on a specific template will show us a larger preview with additional information. For example, let's take a look at the archive templates. We can edit a template by clicking here, which will take us directly into the Elementor editor. Some kits include several options for the same site parts, giving us the freedom to style our site however we see fit. Our kit contains several archive templates, which we can use to display different types of archives, such as one archive template for a category and another for a tag. Since Xander plans to publish all his articles under one category, we'll go ahead and delete any unneeded templates. Click here to delete this template. Great! To add a new template for a specific site part, click the plus icon here, which will take us directly to the editor. Alternatively, we can click the plus icon in the top right corner, which will prompt us to choose a site part template. Clicking the eye icon brings up more specific information on that part, including a dedicated video and a help article. Using what we've learned, we'll go ahead and make some adjustments on the different parts of our site, starting with the header. Let's take a look at what needs to be changed here. Xander's logo appears a bit small, so we'll need to change its size. We'll also need to connect the menu pop-up. Let's start with the logo. Click the logo widget to edit it. We can see from the icon here that it's dynamic and displays the image we set earlier as our site logo. Head over to Style, where we'll change the logo's width. Next, we'll switch to Responsive View to make sure that the logo looks great on different devices. We'll begin with Tablet View. If we don't enter a value for a responsive setting, it will acquire the value we entered in the Bigger Device View. This is because, in most cases, responsive edits in Elementor are inherited from the larger viewport, or screen size, down to the smaller viewport. So as we can see here, Tablet View has inherited the desktop view's value, which is displayed in gray. Next, we'll switch to Mobile View. Use the responsive bar at the top to navigate easily between devices, or use the keyboard shortcut Command or Control Shift M. The value is different from desktop and inherited tablet width because it has already been preset manually by the kit's creator. We'll change the value for the width. But as we can see, there isn't too much of a difference here. This is because the logo size is limited by the column width, which has also been preset in the kit. So let's adjust the column by clicking it and increase the column width value. Now that we changed the size of this column, the logo has room to expand to its full width, but the remaining column gets pushed lower down in order to display its given width. Fix this by clicking the remaining column and update its width. Next, we'll edit the menu. Click the menu icon. You'll notice this icon also uses a dynamic link, this time linking to an existing pop-up. Let's make sure it's connected to the right pop-up by clicking the wrench icon. And under pop-up, type in menu. 
and choose the correct pop-up. Click the wrench icon again to close it. Click Update to save our changes. Cool! Now that the header is done, let's take a look at the menu pop-up template and see if it requires any changes. Use the Finder to easily access it without exiting the Elementor editor. As we can see, this template also uses the logo widget. On the right, we'll find the nav menu widget, which is pulling its links from the menu we created earlier in the course. This menu looks great, so let's continue to the site's footer. We'll use the finder again, this time to navigate to the footer. Scroll down a bit and let's take a look at what we need to change here. We'll need to update the heading and text editor widgets with Xander's copy, as well as change this image. We'll also take a look at connecting the form widget to email marketing services. Then at the bottom, we'll update the credit line in the heading widget and add in our social media links. So we'll start by selecting the heading and changing the title and the text editor widget content. Next, we'll choose another photo. As you can see, we don't have an image widget here, so let's see how this image is being displayed. Select it, and as we can see, it's in a column. We'll click on the style options, and we can see from here that the column is using an image as its background. So all we'll need to do is click the image and select a different photo. Great! Next, we'll select the form widget. Under Actions after Submit, we have options to link this form to different newsletter services, such as MailChimp or MailerLite. To find out more about integrating your email marketing service into Elementor Forms, check out the link in the description. Select the heading widget to update the credit line. Like links, the title field can also use dynamic tags. It's set to display the current date, and by clicking the wrench icon, we can see it shows the current year, represented by the letter Y. Cool! We'll expand the advanced section and change the text that appears after the copyright symbol. And last, but definitely not least, let's not forget to add our social media links before we update. And that's it! Now you know how to use Elementor's one-of-a-kind theme builder to design and manage all of your site parts from one place. Before we continue, feel free to spend some time exploring the theme builder and templates included in the kit. Then go ahead and remove any inactive templates, indicated by the gray status dot. In our next lesson, we'll cover the essence of our blog, creating and managing new posts. So click to keep watching. See you there!